Right, so I just want to say a brief word about the, um, the Lilly Grant. So the Lilly Grant uh, is, was pursued because when Bridgepoint hired uh, me to be your pastor, uh, in that hire uh, stipulates every seven years I will go on a sabbatical because if you don't renew your pastor and have your pastor be learning and growing, then he's going to burn out on the one hand and he won't stay fresh to be able to give to you. And so this is a great opportunity for me as your pastor to be able to, on the one hand, go away and get refreshed. In case you're interested, I'm going to be studying at Oxford University for a little bit. I'm going to be doing uh, uh, an intensive study on evangelism and discipleship. And we will be taking an extended time uh, away to just relax. (laughs) Okay? And then the plan is for us to come back renewed with a new sense of depth and strength to be able to lead you. And then the other thing is that there are large portions of that, those, uh, that grant is to give to us and you as a congregation so that you will be refreshed. And we want to have a focus on outreach and spiritual uh, growth in that, and we are working with people, and I'm very excited because God has provided so many amazing things. God has pr- provided a, a handful of people that have stepped up and say, we will cover the preaching and the teaching. We will cover the needs, that, the day in and day out needs of the church, and I'm very excited because um, Mark and Kayleen Ledlow, as well as Dave and Peggy Ritchie, who have experience working with these grants, have stepped forward, and they are going to be leading the communications and events team. (laughs) Woohoo! And I just want to say one thing. So so we had this meeting, and I I had these low expectations, right? I I just wanted to open up the subject, right? And we get in there, and we're around Kayleen and Mark's table. And I'm like, they're like, okay, what do you want to do? And I'm starting to tell them. And and then they, and I'm thinking we're, we're just going to open this up. We're going to need to have two, three, four more meetings in order to get going. And they were like, dude, we've got this. They're like, we are your people. And they just started, they have so many amazing ideas and so much energy. I am so grateful to you. And I'm so grateful to Dave, Dave and Peggy Ritchie who could not be with us because they needed to be away for a home inspection. So uh, If you see them, thank them, and be sure to connect with Bill Dean. Okay, so constitutional amendment. Now, what is this all about? Okay, this this constitutional amendment, if I could ever find it here, all right, you will see at the tail end of your packet, um, there there is the Bridgepoint Constitution. And if you look at the Bridgepoint Constitution, Article... Nine, Article 4.9. It's the very last thing, okay? Now, all this is, is what the EFCA used to have. And what they had was a statement that said something like this. 4.9 says, we believe in the personal and bodily premillennial return of our Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of Christ at this time known to God, okay? Now, all this is, is that, The denomination over the last several years has wanted to create better language that's more biblically inclusive of people who are following Jesus and holding to the word of God. And it is one of the few times I think that you'll see that opening things up is far better than closing them down. Okay? And the denomination voted on that, and they changed the language. They only changed one word, and the word was premillennial. And if you want to know what premillennial is, I will tell you later. If you want to know what my view on the millennium is, I will tell you later. But the issue here is they changed it to glorious. And what that means is that if you're premillennial or you're mid-trib, post-trib, you know, if you're a pan-millennial, it means it's all going to pan out in the end. I heard one guy say he's pro-millennial. In other words, I'm really excited about Jesus coming and ruling and reigning, right? (laughs) Wherever you are, if you are biblical, you are welcome, okay? Now, we need to vote on this because this is, we are 
faith statement is supposed to be what the denomination's faith statement is. And we need a supermajority, two-thirds vote in order to pass that. Now, uh, my fault, I goofed. I did not get this out to you in time for us to vote today. Okay? We have to notify you in writing, according to this document, all right, 30 days prior. I got it out like 20-some days, all right? So we need to wait to actually cast our vote, all right? But if you want to, we're going to let you have that so you can consider it. If you want to turn it in today, that's fine because then we can get that from you, all right? So we just want to let you know that that's where we're going. That vote was going to be due at a certain time, and, um, and we will be handling that. Did I get that right, Jim, Bill, some of the people... Did I get it right? Where's Bill? Yeah, we're planning on voting in two weeks. Yes, we're planning on right at the end of the closing service. the vote in two weeks. We're going to officially do it, but we want to let you know that. And that was put into you in, in writing uh, in a rudimentary form in the letter, the paper letter that I wrote to you a few weeks ago. All right? So, any questions? Okay, no questions. All right. Let's do this. Let's move on to Fall Vision 2019. Fall Vision 2019. This is a beautiful photo that was taken approaching Death Valley by, um, by Summit Productions. Um, and I was so impressed with this photo after I saw the production, Summit Productions uh, photo, op, photo plan that I said, could you please share that with me? And Summit actually was kind enough to send the photo. So this is the vision photo that we have for this morning. Okay? So <laughs> Summit Productions, it's Matt Courtney. Okay? <laughs> Everyone's like, what? What? <laughs> and it's not funny unless you know it's Matt. Okay. All right. So... Um, I want to start in an interesting way. I don't think my clicker's working, Carrie. Um, tell me, say when. There we go. So what I want to do is I want to start having a, a, an overview of the strategic plan and what we are talking about today. You should have a copy of it um, I invite you not to open it. In other words, I'd like you to close your strategic plan. And the reason why I want you to close it is because I want you to be able to hear what I have to say. And we will look at it, but I don't want you to look at it now, okay? I want you to understand something and want to think about this. People do what they want. Say it with me. People do what they want. Let me give you an example of this, okay? People will do what they want. Their values will drive their actions, okay? But a lot of times when they start, when you start looking at this, if you look from the outside at a person's life, you might say to yourself, well, that person doesn't really have any vision. Like they don't, uh, they do not actually do what they want. They, they're doing something else. And a lot of that has to do with what is known as the tyranny of the urgent. You know all about this, okay? You don't, come on, you don't clean your house until the company is coming. And then all of a sudden, you show your values, you show what you really want, and some of you are like, no, my house is dirty, I don't care, right? <laughs> but you show what you really want because you quickly have an urgent situation and you're working on it, all right? Or you're quietly acting, okay, out of your deep values, and people don't really see that. So, for example, many of you come home after a long day, and no one understands, but you sit down, you grab this thing called the remote, and you put on television, and you lean back. Now, why do you do that? You value rest. You value relaxation. No one sees you do it but you are doing what you want, right? And I want to let you know that the elders, and I also want to say to you personally, humbly, okay, have been working very, very, very hard. 
and trying to put things forward. Um, I want you to all turn around and I want you to look at Carrie. Carrie, wave. Carrie, wave. Okay. I want you to look at that camera. That camera is brand new. Someone donated it to the church this week. Cost $1,300. Uh, Brenda donated that monitor. Okay. And we are trying to up our tech game. And there's a very good reason for this. The reason for this is because we know that people are online and that is the future of communications. And so we have spent, uh, how long, Carrie? Hours and hours and hours and hours. We are in fact doing what we want and we do have a long-term vision and you may not see it, okay? But what we want to do today, okay, is we want to Cry, try to create the solution. And what the elders have been working on, we've been trying to create the solution for, for clarifying our values so that if we say that we want a clean house, we don't wait till company is coming for us to scramble and do it. Wouldn't that be nice, moms, if the house was just perfectly clean and people were coming over and you're like, oh, it's clean. I don't have to like come after myself or kids or husbands or anybody else to do it, right? You clarify your focus by having a strategy on the one hand and on the other, you develop teams that operate the systems of the church and operate the vision and the value of the church so that everything's humming. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what the elders did, okay, is for the last six months, nine, Ryan's like, nine, nine months, okay, we developed a strategic plan and process that we would like to share with you today. That's in the public. That's, that's, in, your, that's in your published document, okay? We spent six months praying and publishing what we believe is a five-year plan. Now, what this was based on this was based on feedback that we got from you. This was based on our, under, our longstanding history of the healthy aspects of Bridgepoint's culture and values, okay? And it was based on us praying through, discussing at length, and spending meeting after meeting after meeting, and hour after hour after hour, saying, okay, Lord, where do you want us to go? future thinking, all right? Now, we had several values in this, okay? There are many of them, and what it looks like in, in this document, and I want you to understand how it works. The document has values of the church clarified. It has goals that we want and believe we want to hit, and it has objectives about those goals, and then it has something that's also very important. It has strategy. What are you going to do and how are you going to do it? Okay? And it was a process for us to put this together. And the really exciting thing is that you might not have known this explicitly, but you probably have felt it because you've started to see some of the things. We didn't wait to publish this vision to you before we got on it and started doing stuff, okay? And I'm gonna give you some clear examples of that in just a minute, all right? We said, okay, Rome was not built in a day. If you want something wonderful, you're gonna to have to work on it for a while. And so we said, all right, where do we start? Okay, well, you eat an elephant, how many bites at a time? One, one bite at a time. So we're like, all right, well, where do we start? Well, what I have chosen to do today is to explain this process, give you a little bit of the background, and I'm only going to give you two of the six things that we worked on. And the reason why I'm only going to give you two is because you probably, I probably should only do one, but I'm like, mm, yeah, I want a little bigger bite, right? That's my style. But also, I think that they're critical for us to talk about, talk about, talk about, re-talk about, talk about again. All right? So what I want to do is I want to talk about what I think is the most important 
value that we put in the strategic plan that you have in front of you. Now, I would invite you to open up your strategic plan and go to uh, goal number five, okay? So open your strategic plan, and what you're gonna see is an overview of the plan on page one, okay? And then you're gonna see goals and objectives beginning on page two, and I want to start us with goal number five, which is found on page eight. Oh, it says page eight in my notes. Look at that. Okay. So, and this goal is to equip families with the knowledge and belief in Jesus Christ so that we will achieve generational kingdom impact. Uh, Let me just put it as crystal clear as you possibly could state it. We are going to invest in our future. We are going to invest in our future. Okay, can someone tell me, this is a discussion now, can someone tell me what happens if you don't invest in your future? Louder, Matt. You don't have a future. We have very good news. God is blessing you. God is blessing us together. And we are going to invest in our future. We want to invest in the things that are strategic and helpful for the spiritual growth of our children. Okay? For the spiritual growth of our community. And if, if if I don't state it clear enough, one of the major things that we need to do is we need to move forward with investing in staffing. This is absolutely critically important. We are going to need to say, God, give us the faith to see a future. Help us break through and be able to have really amazing growth. Okay? Now, I was, when I went to the Dominican Republic this past summer, I had a very interesting conversation with one of the team members. And the team member noticed that some things were not done properly. And they said, you know what? That's unacceptable. You've got to plan for that. You've got to finance that. You've got to get that done. And I was like, wow. And I thought about Bridgepoint Church. And I said, you know what? We need to have a really crystal clear plan. And we need to put our best foot forward. And we need to start saying, okay, what is our future so that we can invest it so that our church would move forward. And we need to not live in the past, but have a bright picture of the future. Okay? Now, I want you to see a couple of things. We have, in fact, begun this already. One of the things that, that we have is we have established a counseling center with point-to-point counseling with Carolyn Moore. Now, many of you know that this is happening, but we believed that that was absolutely critical for the future of the church to be able to have those kind of resources, and we prayed about it, and God miraculously provided And I mean miraculously. Like, I have never seen a counseling office open so fast, fast, be so sustainable, and offer so much help to people. I've never seen it. And I've seen a lot. God is in point-to-point counseling. All right? Another thing is that we said, okay, what is the staffing that we need to be investing in in order to be uh, equipping our families for generational impact? And Uh, We invested in a young man named R.J. Snyder. R.J., can you come on up here? Um, Bill, can you give him a mic? A little applause for R.J.? Okay, come on up. All right. And we know, we know that if we do not start equipping young people for the future, there will be no future for the church. And we also know that if we do not start equipping our children, there will be no future for the children's ministry of our church. And RJ has been serving faithfully as the youth pastor and as children's ministry, one of the team children's ministry leadership. He is doing an absolutely fantastic job. Amen? Yeah, you're doing a great job. You're like, huh. And here's the thing that you may not know. He has already come to the place where his room is not big enough. Let that sink in. 
He has already come to the place where his room is not big enough. Remember you came to me and you're like, hey, bro, like we had 12 kids of the youth ministry last night and like it was kind of packed and there wasn't enough seats for the kids. Like, would it be okay if we moved up to Kid City? Well, it would be okay if we increased the infrastructure of Kid City to accommodate his ministry. What do you need, bro? How can we pray for you? Um, yeah, like he said, we don't have as much space in the youth, youth room because um, we're starting to get a lot of kids, which is awesome. Um, praise God for that. Um, so some of the things we need is, um, I think, oof, where do I start? Um, just a few things. Just, just a few things. Um, if we wanted to do keep the youth center, we were, uh, I was just planning on moving some stuff out possibly, rearranging some of the furniture, getting rid of a couple of the chairs in there, um, probably repainting in there. Um, making it look like a youth room if we wanted to stay there. But if we do move up to Kid City, um, it's already basically set up. We would just have to get something for, for worship. You know, we already have the projector up there, so we can use that. We have a good sound system up there. So it's basically just getting um, just something to make it look like a youth room. Yeah, um, he's, you're, he's not really there yet, but he's dreaming about it. I am and dreaming about it. I have this spot, vision right? in my head. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, but we want to put like our... Mm, put our uh, three core beliefs up there, which is um, which is live, learn, or learn, live, and love. Um, so we can put those on the wall. We can put some stuff for uh, Agape Youth up there. Um, some different things that would be really awesome for the kids to have. Um, it's let, awesome that we have the gym, too. And but. let's be very clear. This costs money. Yeah. This costs money. All right? And, and we will invest... And we will do what we value. If we value our children, we're going to get to that next. We value our children and we value the future generation of the church. We will start investing in that. All right. Um, tell, us, tell us about your needs for volunteers, please. Yes, for volunteers. So we have two great male youth leaders that have been coming. Um, Kathy is another one that's been coming. She can't come all the time, but it's been great to have her as well. But we really do need um, some more leaders. We really need a female leader. Um, if, you, if anybody wants to serve, um, that would be awesome because we really do need a female youth leader. Um, and, I mean, if, you, if you're a dude, we're not going to exclude you. We're not going to say you can't serve. Um, so, yeah, we need dudes too. Um, but, yeah, so we really do need a, a girl youth leader, though. Awesome. Hey, RJ, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And the next area we've already started to touch on is children's ministry. Uh, we really do need to uh, pro do some proposed renovations and to increase the resources of the children's ministry. Um, we really need an associate pastor. We really need it. Okay, here's why. One person and a board of leaders can lead a group of people of about 100. An exceptionally gifted person might be able to stretch that into like 150, but he won't be doing a good job. And so what churches do is they hit these glass ceilings and people don't understand why they don't move on. The reason why they don't, don't move on is because the leadership will not cast a vision for breakthrough. You don't cast a vision for incremental growth. You cast a vision for quantum growth. Now, if you think I'm not scared, you're wrong. But I will not sit here and, and say, well, let's just bump along for our entire lives. Let's not invest in our children. Let's not have something where we have a space and the personnel to have a irresistible youth ministry and children's ministry where kids go, can I go? Can I go? I love Kid City. I love Kid City. I love Miss So-and-So. She's so wonderful. I love Mr. So-and-So. He's so awesome. I love that space. And where parents would walk in and they would feel their children are safe. Here's our problem. We do not have the right personnel and we do not have the right uh, security systems at the present time and we need an, a major infrastructure change. And all that is going to cost money and you, you can, we will outline it all for you if you need it. We will need new computers. We will need a building project. We will need to hire new staff. Now, if you say, well, how can we do that? You know, all my bean counters, I'm looking at you, Brenda, okay? 
And wherever Linda Brooks is, I'm going to channel to Linda Brooks, my bean counters. I call them bean counters because they're very careful and they do a very good job. But they'll go, oh, we don't have enough money for that. My God is not short on cash. Amen. And we're not talking about doing something foolish and irrational. We're talking about doing something that is visionary and future-minded. We have got to have a place where we see a future of the expansion of the kingdom of God and we are not afraid to invest in it. We are not afraid to speak out. Now, I, I'm like, <laughs> right? Will the people follow? Do they love our children? I know you do. Will we invest in the future of our kids? Yes, I know you do. There are, then this is why we wanted to start here. Because I actually think that this is absolutely one of the most critical places for us. We will only have a breakthrough when we begin to cast clear vision for investment. Now, if you say, what is that? I am deliberately not telling you those details because we've got, where's Crystal? I, we got to sit down with Crystal and the finance team. We got to sit down with the elders. And we got to create dollar numbers. This is concept level. Concept level right now. And if you want to say, yes, I will invest in the infrastructure of our children. Yes, I will help with that. Awesome. Come talk to us. Okay. Awesome. Speaking of investing in our children's ministry, can you look at Mrs. Linda Brooks? I mean, this is Linda Getz. Why are we clapping for Linda? We are clapping for Linda because Linda has invested her time with the children's ministry and she's going to be leading the, um, children's play to highlight and focus on the fact that we have an awesome children's ministry, okay? And she recruited my daughter to help, which is so cool because it gives her something constructive to do that she's actually good at. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. That was just kind of for fun, okay? Now, um, the next thing that we have to do is we've got to focus on evangelism and outreach. And one of the reasons why we have to do, do this is because we have to understand that Jesus had a vision to reach people and he had a vision to save people so that they could go reach other people so that they could be saved. This is the whole shtick, people. All right? And what we want to do is we want to begin to equip people for evangelism. Now, one of the things that Jesus did is he equipped his followers for evangelism and is what is known as movement. Non-movement is where you give something to someone and after that exchange, it's done. Movement is where you give something to someone and they know how to give it to another person who gives it to another person and then you start a chain reaction. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret, okay? The secret is that one of the ways things get moving is on the internet when things go viral. Have you heard like these viral videos? Okay. But we have a bottleneck problem at Bridgepoint and it's that, and it's okay. Like that's not entirely a negative thing. Like here's the thing. Do you want to go have lunch after this or would you like me to teach you a class? Louder. Lunch. What if I could teach you a class on YouTube? What if I could make, what if we could make resources available to anyone, anywhere, anytime? What if we were savvy about this generation and said, we are going to have an online presence where people can take online classes and we can train people for any ministry that we want? We have a video studio downstairs that's production level. And what we did is we said, we want to begin to think carefully about our future. And by the way, all these like Bridgepoint bonuses and stuff like that, like that's totally strategic. All I'm doing is practicing how to use the internet so that we can go boom when we really know how to do it. All right? I have oh, spent a lot of time on this and it's been a really interesting journey. Just for fun, did you know I built my own teleprompter this past week for free? I didn't want to spend your money on it. I was like, I didn't know if the concept was going to work and I'm not going to go spend hundred, several hundred dollars on a teleprompter unless I proved the concept. Well, I proved the concept and then I liked the one I built so much and I'll just keep using it. Good news for you, right? It'll be free, right? So we want to have movement. 
There are people out there, okay, that have stopped going to church. And when the, they start thinking about going to church, do you know where they start exploring? I'll give you a hint. It's not by visiting churches physically. The interweb. Remember, Al Gore invented that. The, they go on the internet. And we have people come and say, yes, we came to your church because we watched your sermons online. And guess what? If we had one family, we had several families come to the church that way. If we have one family come and they begin to give, that will take care of the entire technological infrastructure every year in perpetuity. It's a good investment. It's a good investment, okay? And also, people are online. That's where they are. Jesus was met people exactly where they were. He, he went out into the fields, and he spoke to people on the lakeside and on the mountainside, and he went into the, the temple and the villages. The question is, where are the people? Where are the de-churched? Where are the unchurched? Where are the people that are spiritually hungry? Now, you know I say every single week, tell, you tell me what I have been saying every single week before I start my sermon. Can somebody tell me? Because if you can't tell me, I might cry. Um, tell me what I do before I open up the Bible. What's the first thing I talk about? Inviting people to church. That's the number one way. By the way, it is never going to change. It will never change. The number one way, and all we're trying to do is give you more tools to be able to share with people. What if you could say to them, hey, check out our YouTube channel. Or what if, say, say Karen, let's say, you, um, let's say you wanted to make a hospitality team and you were gathering a whole bunch of people together and you wanted to train new people to come in. You could actually make a video and then you could have someone watch it in her own time and then she could understand the principles of what it means to be on your team. Carrie, you could do the same thing with your tech people, by the way. Just... We'll do it, okay? Or let's say we wanted to teach a class on parenting and so forth. Okay, you understand the issue. We have got to begin to equip for evangelism and we want to have movements and that's why we're going to invite Dr. Ed Gross to come in the month of June and do an entire discipleship and evangelism movement seminar and he's going to preach for the entire month of June. Okay? And we're going to have events that are funded by the Lilly Grant for us to be able to have movement in discipleship and evangelism. And we would love for you to engage. Now, how can you engage? How can you engage? And this is going to seem really silly. Watch the YouTube channel. I'm giving you all an assignment. If I do not have like 20 people tell me that they watch the Bridgepoint bonus thing and come back to me with scathing criticisms on the one hand and, and telling me what they think I could do better on the other, I'm going to cry. Okay? And here's why. Because I will know that you do not care enough about giving the feedback for the vision of our church. But if you do, I'll see that you caught the vision. Okay? I'm really serious about this. That's one way you can engage. Here's another way that you can engage. You can join an outreach team. You can, here's a thought. You could say, I'll, I'll be the captain of it. I'll form it. We need to start having people say, we're, we're, look, Steve does missions and outreach, and that's great. I'm not asking you to do this, Steve, because you, that's basically been sort of like foreign missions and local missions. We're talking about what we do here at Bridgepoint. In other words, are we having special events that are reaching our community in unique ways where someone would say, yeah, I'll go to that? Are we going out to them and addressing the issues of the heart? Are we, having, are we, are we carefully thinking, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have like a sermon series with the pastor, and then we're going to have a really big day, and we're going to invite all the community to come, and we're going to really have it as a very well prayed through and planned out strategy to be able to go to people and share Christ and help them come into Jesus. Now, in June, 
I wrote a document called um, the, the break, Spiritual Breakthroughs. It's been on the back table. And I actually made an appeal to many of you and said, would you be a part of that team? Okay, would you be a part of that team? Do you know how many people responded? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Zero. Zero. Okay, this is what that told me. That told me that that vision was not carefully enough and clearly enough articulated. That told me that that was not said often enough. That said that that was not heralded enough. And it said that people were not ready or they did not understand it. So we're going to talk about it again. <laughs> okay? Okay. All right? And what we want to do is we want to equip people for evangelism. All right? Here's another thing, and this may seem like really crazy to you, but we need to build a prayer room. Okay? Everybody look over where Ryan Moore is. Okay? I don't know if you can see this mirror. Okay? That is a racquetball court, and that's where our professional sound studio and our video studio is. Where Ryan is and over there are two empty racquetball courts. And the proposal is for us to, to build a floor across that racquetball court and then build a door right there where there will be a dedicated space for people to pray before and after the service for the outreach of our church, and we could use that for other means like a crying room for moms. There's a lot of things like that. Now, here's what we need. We need a team of people that says, I will be on that team. I will help, I will help plan that. I will help fund that, and I will help build it. Who wants to answer that call? Who wants, who wants to build that room? If you want to build that, you do? Okay, good. If you want to build that room, see Dawn. See Dawn. And Dawn, if no one comes to you, come talk to me because it just means I haven't said it enough. It's okay. All right? We need to start putting our vision forward. Oh, I'm so emotional. I'm so sorry. Nothing goes forward until we pray. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. But in me, I will provide you fruit and fruit that will last. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm like getting emotional. I'm tired. I'm hungry. So are you. Let's keep moving, okay? Um, we got to build a prayer room, okay? And finally, and I've talked about this already, we need to start forming outreach dream teams for these big days, for sermon series. Do you know that I know what I'm going to preach to you six months in advance? And do you know that I don't want to do that independently? I want to work with you, people who care about your community, people who care about your friends and neighbors, people who want to grow spiritually. I don't want to do that in a vacuum. Do who remembers the What to Do About Worry series? Anyone remember What to Do About Worry? Do you know why I did that series? I planned it before I released the big day breakthrough vision that I shared with you in June, because I thought that in June, people would go, ooh, I want to be a part of that, and then we would spend the whole summer preparing it, so when I preached it in September, we'd invite all the worried and anxious people in Valpo, which would be all of them. But I didn't lead you well enough, and I apologize. But we want to keep talking about it. If you want to be a part of a dream team that cares about your community and says, yeah, I would love to have a special events. I would love to have big days. I would love to tell you, hey, let's preach on this. You preach on that. We'll have a party for this. We'll invite everybody in. We'll do it on social media. We'll invite our friends. It'll be awesome. It'll be fun. It'll be a big day. If you want to be a part of that, I'd love to talk to you about it. I would really love to talk to you about it. Okay? Um, and the question is, will we, as a church, put our best values forward? I know we will. I know we will, okay? We're not gonna do it all in one day, but here's what we wanna do. We wanna love to do what we've clarified in our plan, okay? We wanna love to do what we've clarified in our plan. We want to invest in people to reach people for Christ, and we want to pray, 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 and pray that God would ignite our hearts with a vision that we would be able to invite 
people to come to, to meet Jesus and we would be bringing Jesus to them. So with that in mind, like everything that I just said is at the concept level, right? Because you have to start somewhere. And what I would like us to do is spend just a few minutes in public prayer, okay? Here's what public prayer is. Wherever your heart is, you can speak out, right? So Bill, if you wanted to pray, you could just pray right there from your seat. In fact, we want you all to pray. We're going to spend a few minutes. We want to invite, I think, Matt, are you opening the prayer time? Yeah, Matt's going to open us, and Jim's going to close. And then in between, we want to just, whatever you want is on your heart to pray to God about, about the vision of our church, the future of our church, we'd like several of you to pray publicly. Could you do that? Let's pray.